everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it is another Friday, February 12th. we got a nice day ahead of us. Indeed. We are going to be drawing traditional animation. Well, I'm going to talk to you about animation. We're not really going to shoot anything. You're going to get to see things move because I'm going to be flipping paper. But, um, you know, I get, a, I, I get a lot of questions from people, young animators that are just kind of getting into it, and they don't understand. They understand doing the bouncing ball and how that works and all that, and the squash and stretch and... But then they think, okay, well, how, what is, how does that, what's that got to do with character animation? How do you, how do you apply that to character animation? And I know for some of you, it's, this might be old hat, but I thought it might be fun to go back to basics and we can talk about squash and stretch and, and overlap and all that kind of fun stuff as it relates to character animation, taking it from the basics of the bouncing ball and then bringing it into practical use, which is in your character animation. And I thought I would do it retro style on paper so there you go but first things first i want to mention that we have a big valentine sale going on at creatureartteacher.com so for this weekend only use promo code artlove for 25 percent off of all of our art lessons animation courses and brushes that's basically everything on the site other than merchandise it's uh 25 percent off uh, with the promo code Art Love, because we all love art. Art Love. It's Valentine's Day. Valentine's weekend. Sunday's going to be big. So stay at home. Cook your loved one a nice dinner. Stay out of the restaurant. Don't spread. <laughs> don't spread the, the COVID love. For a second there, the, they're just going to pause. Out. Cook, cooked your loved one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, become a cannibal for once. We got some fruit punch today. I don't usually drink juices because there's so much sugar in them, but man, that tastes, that tastes good, man. <laughs> so uh, I got Dustin with me, like always. Hi. How's it going? Got Nick in Sarasota, and he's going to be answering questions too. And we're going to sit here and we're going to draw. Um, the first thing I want to do, is, um, one thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, we talk about stretch and squash and deformities and things like that when you're getting hit and all in animation and how exaggerated it is. Well, it's interesting because I don't know how many of you have ever seen someone getting hit in the face in slow motion, but it's the one of the most disturbing things I've seen because there is so much squash, so much stretch, so much overlap, so much deformity that happens all in the real world. I've got a, a little clip pulled up once you pull that up Dustin real quick yeah. and this is a little clip I pulled from the slow-mo guys and here's a guy getting hit in the side of the face with a soccer ball I want you to watch this All right. and I want you to see how this applies <laughs> look at all that overlap and all that deformity they're gonna they're gonna have it come through really look at his nose Oh, it's a clear hit on the side of the face. <laughs> oh, the shockwave said, Oh, your nose <laughs> bone moved under your nose. Oh. So, look at all that deformity happening in that face. And so, I want to use as I'm, I'm using this as an example because, you know, we really can't, <laughs> this mouth, we really can get away with a lot in animation. And when you play it back at speed, even though you're drawing extremely pushed drawings, when you play it back at speed, you don't see it as strongly as you think you might, but you will feel it. And so that's how our stretch and squash applies. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. So let me take this guy out. Oh, I want to mention too. I forgot to mention. Um, I think we have a, do we have a slide for it? The, uh, my, my live event. Oh, the workshop? Yeah, the workshop. Yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. On March 20th, uh, I mentioned it last week. March 20th, I've got a live workshop coming up. I did some watercolors last week. And um, and so on March 20th, I'm going to spend six hours doing uh, animal portraits in watercolor. I'm going to be talking about my approach. Uh, I just updated the supply list. And I think Nick will be getting that up soon on the site. Um, 
uh, we're going to have a blast. I'm going to be giving you your own reference if you want to use that, or you can use your own if you want. But I'm going to be supplying the reference. I'm going to be uh, 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 talking about my approach, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So March 20th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, I'm going to work for about three hours or two and a half hours. We take a little bit of a break, and then I work another two and a half hours. So uh, six hours altogether, and it's a blast. So uh, check it out. Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live. 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 And you We're can doing get, it live! <laughs> you can get more information there. So there's that. So let's start. Up, talk, let's talk about stretch and squash. Where's my glasses? Your glasses. Now that I'm an old man, I need my glasses. He needs your glasses. Never needed glasses when I was a younger man. I used to sit here this close <laughs> and draw. Now I can't even. I can't see it from this far back. I need my glasses. My old man. So, for for those that are just beginners, and for those that are not, just be patient. We're going to talk about the concept of stretch and squash. What is stretch and squash? Well, here we have a ball. And in animation, we like to squash them, make them more dynamic. We like to stretch them as we're going through the actions. Maybe it's hitting an object and it's squashing. Maybe it's going really fast and it's stretching. But these are things that we like to do during movement. So here I have the ball. Hang on one sec. Is my, your, your is my head getting in the way? Your, oh. head, your hair, your bundle of hair. My bundle of hair. I can sit back. So I just wanted to show you, you know, here's our, a little example of the ball stretching, and we can even do it even more if we want. Really stretch it out. In this case, I'm trying to keep the volume the same. I'm just changing that volume, changing its shape. Okay. So there's... Look at that. You're getting to see animation right there live. Look at that. Magic. Oh, I'm a wizard. <laughs> Magic. Magic. Now, we can go the other way. Let's turn these around. Put this guy on top. This one on the bottom. Woohoo. I'm juggling. Juggling paper. So now, let's say we have these. this one coming up. And then we want it to squash. Well, it's just like you thought. You know, it's squash. Just have it squash this way. I'm just having it squash randomly in the in the air just so you can see the shape changes. I can just hear it in my mind going. You see that? So that's along with the right timing. This is stretch and squash in a nutshell. You want to time it right, and, and uh, you've got hang time and all that, and that, that'll give you your physics. But what, the biggest thing I want to focus on here is the is the uh, the um, the shape deformities. And I think once you know, when we're as as young students, we're getting into this, and we do all of our bouncing ball and squash and stretch, and we. We get that in our heads really well, but then when it when we transition over to the characters, for some reason we tend to forget it. We tend to get stiffened up because we get caught up all of a sudden in the anatomy and the expressions and all this kind of stuff, and forget that the squash and the stretch need to be really all part of that. It's all intertwined in with those those elements. Stay thirsty, my friend. Stay thirsty. Hey, Dustin, can you do me a favor? Uh, depends on the favor. I'm roasting. Can you turn that fan on? Are you able to reach it? Because if I stand up, I'm going to take the camera. Oh. Hey. Uh, there we go. I'll scoot over. Scoot over. Your butt's in my face. Uh, just, uh, just one. That's good. That's good right there. Yeah. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Yep, I got it. Oh, that's good. Nice can breeze. you feel... The fan tonight. Yes, yes I can. All right, so there's that. So now what if we have a character? So now let's draw a simple character. How do you know how to do the timing? 
Well, that just comes. It's a. Uh, um, it's what. <laughs> if it feels right, it is right. Sometimes your timing is going to be slow. Sometimes your timing is going to be fast. Sometimes it has to be somewhere in the middle. Sometimes it's textured timing where it's fast and slow. So it really depends on the situation. And over time, you'll understand uh, what's going to be right and what's wrong. I keep put, just grabbing paper and putting it on here. But what if we now let's just take a simple character. And so one of the things I see with uh, animators is like when they draw a variety of uh, expressions for their character. They tend to be a lot of change inside the silhouette of the of the of the head, let's say. But then the silhouette, the shape of the head doesn't change from expression to expression. And that to me is a that's a that's an issue. So let's say we have a very simple character. Is this big enough, or should I draw bigger? I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a little bigger. A little, a little bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna draw a little bigger. A little better. Bigger. bigger. Let's do this. Go big or go home. Yeah. Twitch question: How can I improve posture while I draw? Sit up straight. That's how. <laughs> you need to get a good chair. A good chair and just remember to sit up straight all right so here I have a uh, I'm drawing a, a character and, and this one's gonna be a very simple character hello hello there Hello there. So now we've got we've gone from a round ball to kind of this round headed character, but now it's not just round, it's got complexity to the shape, right? So let's just start with that head. So we've got complexity to the shape now. So now, well, how do you what do you do when you when you want to push an extreme? Well, maybe he's grimacing like he just tasted something really sour. Okay? Well, that's we can squash our character. So not only are we going to have the expression of sour, we're going to play with squash and stretch. YouTube question, do you have some video about how to work with exposure sheets? I have a big problem with it. You know, we get this question a lot, and I don't have specifically one on exposure sheets, although I do talk about them in a couple of videos. Um, we'll get something out. So here, now you can see I'm starting to squash this shape. Now, there, there are parts like on the cranium that a lot of times you might want to depending on how realistic you want your animation. Maybe that cranium stays a little stiffer and the cheeks are where it gets really squashy, like this. And here it can crinkle up his nose. Is that a charcoal pencil? No, I'm drawing with graphite. It's a big stick of graphite. Graphite. And then here, What is the format paper, and how much uh, does a table like this cost? Well, this is this is sixteen field paper, so it's this is the size paper we used at Disney. Sometimes we would use twelve field, but that kind of went away. So that we mainly use twelve field, which is this size. It's a little over eleven by seventeen. And then the desk is my original Disney desk. I've had this desk for 30 years. This is the same desk I animated Nala from The Lion King and, and The Beast and Raja and I know that these desks were about I think they were about $8,000 back in 1989. So they're they're not cheap desks, they're, they're, and there's only a finite number of them. But here you can see 
So you can squat, and I could I could push that even more. We'll push that even more. So there's that. So here he's just tasted something really sour, or he's scrunching up his face. You see that? But now we can go the other way. And this is all talking about stretch and squash as it relates to that ball. This is how you apply it to your characters. And you'll see a lot of times I start with a big ball for a character. So here he's getting, maybe he's really scared. Actually, I'm going to go even bigger. Go bigger, go home, I say. Go big. I go home. I go home. Actually, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Do you save all your sketches or throw away some of them? I throw away most of them. How do they let you keep these? I think they meant the, the desk. Oh, I bought my desk when I left Disney. <laughs> they didn't let me. It's Disney, man. They don't let you keep anything. <laughs> but they're willing to sell it to you? Yeah. Yeah, because they, they, back in 2004, the studio that we were working at, they shut down. So now you can see this big silhouette change, right? Well, the uh, nose is going to change shape. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. It's all right. Um, I would like to start um, learning animation. What course uh, would you suggest first? Well, I've got an introduction to animation on my website. If you go to creatureartteacher.com, I take you through all the basics of animation, and you can follow it <clears throat> on paper or you can do it digitally, whatever you want to do. So notice I'm opening those eyes up, too. See them getting bigger? How long have you been animating? I've been animating for about 33 years. Are I, these... started, I started animating in 1988. I was 20 years old. Oh, oh. Open those eyes up, the eyebrows up, the eyebrows up. Oh, see that? See here, when you when you push the, the silhouette change, when you're drawing expressions for your character, when you push those silhouette changes, you see, then it makes it more dynamic. Are these key drawings first to do in-betweens later of uh, things necessary every time or not or not every time? It depends on the timing. This, these are just examples of squash and stretch. But yes, these would, these would be key drawings. But as far as how many in-betweens go in there and all that, it just that just depends on the timing. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> So this is how this applies to the squash and stretch applies to your characters. Now, I was doing some stuff the other day for another video where I had a much more complex character, an animal character, a lion. But look, see that? Now there's a squash and it goes into our stretch. And that is, you know, I'm thinking about that bouncing ball and that's how it applies to your character. Like so. What is the cost with one animation and storyboard and layout? What's that? Uh, what is the cost with one animation and storyboard and layout? I think what I was asking is like how much will it cost for one particular segment of animation? Like I don't know. From... That, that, it all, there's too many variables. Depends on how finished it's going to be and all kinds of stuff. Let's we'll so, say um, Brother Bear, for instance. How Brother from, Bear cost eighty-six million dollars to make, from beginning to end. Yes, he spent eighty-six million dollars making that. So here we go. 
So now I'm going to create a, a much more complex character. So now let's say we've got this lion. You have a ton of great uh, courses on your site. Is there a suggested order for of which courses to do first? No, not really, because it all depends on what you want to learn. There's, you know, because it's animal drawing and human anatomy, character design, storyboarding. It's all over the place. So you can pretty much just start anywhere. I suggested that if you want to start doing animation and character design, maybe you do the anatomy course first. And that'll get you started in there. But other than that, there's really... You can do it any way you want. How do you keep the character looking like the same while squashing and stretching? Uh, any tips for character consistency? It's it's keeping the construction simple. So I, I you know you can see I start with those simple ball shapes, and then I also think about you know the details. I I make sure that I put them in the same place, and keep them related. I'm thinking about the understructure. I keep them related to the understructure. So here I have a character that might be a, a semi, somewhat more realistic, like we might do in The Lion King. How did you guys do camera movements and uh, shakes on traditional animation like this? Was you, it you done... literally move? You literally move the drawing around to get a camera shake. <laughs> that's it, that's really what we did. So here, drawing a lion, and I'm thinking about, you know, when I draw that circle, that's giving me the cheekbones, basically, where they come in. And I know I'm going to have the muzzle come up in here, and that brings in fur in here. You know, male lions have these big kind of sideburns. Get his ears up here. How do you get faster recognition as an artist? You just stick with it. Don't do it for the recognition. Do it because you love it. The recognition will come later. If you're trying to do it for the fame, being an artist, trying to be a famous artist, it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, so here I've got... Lion, I'm just lying around. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is in a neutral pose. Actually, I'm going to give him my brows. Yeah, give him them brows. Maybe a silly question, but how were you able to afford your practice material over the years? I can only imagine you were burning through a lot of paper over the years, especially when you first started off. Yeah, I mean, it's just part of the, you just, that's where you decide, you just got to decide where you're going to put your money. And I always, I was always saving up for more art supplies. Have you drawn a dragon? They are difficult for me. It took me a whole day. <laughs> yes, I've drawn dragons. And yes, they can sometimes take an entire day. Yep. So here, now how would I, how would I, you know, this is complex, right? We got this complex character. He's looking at us. Oh, don't say it's Mufasa. This isn't Mufasa. This is uh, Mufasa's cousin. Steve. Mustafa. <laughs> and the Mustafa. Do you ever have days where you just can't draw or are not satisfied even at this stage? Oh, of course. We all have those days. Okay, so here. Now I've got, got a complex character. Let's do the squash. Let me look up here. What do we got? Any thoughts on blue sky closing? Any advice for those who may be laid off? Yeah, I've gone through it. You know, 
Blue Sky Closing is a tragedy. It's horrible. You know, and it, it's it's drawn. It's you know being driven by economic factors and uh, all kinds of different factors that get thrown in there. Um, I don't know that it's. I don't necessarily agree it's the right thing to do, but I understand it. I mean, definitely in this day and age with COVID, and you've got a, a you know a whole studio that you have to pay salaries to, and you're not getting the return from the box office that they used to. You know, there's hard business decisions that have to be made. I um I hate the fact that it's closed. Um, it's a an amazing studio with incredible talented artists that are just second to none. They're just, I know so many of them and they're amazing, amazing people. And th therefore I think it's, I think it's a horrible thing. Um, anybody that's been in the industry as long as I have has at some point or another gone through a, a, a closing and, uh, or some a shift in the, in the industry. And, um, I, you know, it feels, for me, it feels like about every 15 years, something major shifts in the industry. And I think we're going through another one of those shifts. I think it's being COVID driven. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start squashing this guy. Want to get those eyebrows down. I'm going to squash those brows really deep. I see those eyes squash. I'm going to bring this nose up. Now with lions, what do they have? They've got snarly faces, right? So I'm going to try to get that snarl in there. Get that snarl going. Get that snarl in there. You snarl. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll see me just kind of searching for it with my pencil. I'm searching, searching, and then when I find it, I jump on it. Now, could we push this further? Probably. Let's try. We can. When I'm done with this, we'll try pushing it a little bit more. Or actually, we'll maybe we'll just go right into the into the stretch. Richard on YouTube asks, what sort of income can one expect to make in animation? Well, I know animators that have made, you know, in the day back when it was huge, some animators were make, pushing, you know, a few hundred thousand a year. I don't think it's that's where it's at anymore. But it's it's definitely a decent it's a decent salary if you're if you're a uh, if you're a major you know if you can get up there and, and get some major roles. You can have a, a decent salary. I'd be comfortable. Don't get into animation for the money, though, because once again, it won't it, it won't it won't satisfy you if you if that's why you're doing it. Animation is a labor of love. Okay, so now look at that. Look at the muzzle. See how I'm squashing that muzzle? That muzzle, though. Here, I'm going to bring that. My chin up. I was told to pick a style and stick with it, but I thought being able to have a variety of illustration skills was a good thing. Any thoughts? Yes, I agree. I don't think you have to pick a style and stick with it. Who says that? Who says you have to pick a style and stick with it? You know? Some dumb dumb, I guess. <laughs> but there's no, there's really no reason that you have to do that. I try to work in as many styles and mediums and everything else as I that I can. Makes you a more well-rounded artist. Yeah, isn't that one of the things that they really look look out for? Uh, uh, for Disney animators because there's so many different styles. Yeah, I mean, every movie we it. worked on, we, it was a different style, right? Yeah. And so I, when I reviewed portfolios, I wanted to see people that could do a variety of styles. I was on the review board for over 20 years. 
or for about 20 years, I was on the review board. And I wanted to find people that could, that could do that. So now you can see, there's a squash. You see that? Can you feel it? <laughs> so this is, you know, I'm applying all of that thinking that we did with the with the bouncing ball. But I'm doing it on a much more complex level now. YouTube comment. I'm here just to say thank you for course on the 12 principles of animation. You are welcome. For the person that was looking for the animation course, that's a that's a good one to start with. The 12 principles. That's where I started. Hi, Aaron. Hello. Hello. Uh, how many drawings in a uh, paper are? Uh, needed for example five seconds of a uh, film well uh, it depends if i'm doing all ones which is a drawing for every frame <clears throat> then for five seconds that's 24 drawings times five that's about 121 not 21 what am i saying <laughs> 25 125 which is a lot So there we go. So there's there's a squash. What kind of paper are you using? It seems thick, but see-through. It's a little bit. It is a little bit thicker than normal paper. It's not really see-through. It's just, it just seems see-through because I've got such a heavy pencil, dark lines. Very. It's very dark. Dark and gloomy. So now let's do this. Let's switch these around. I'm guessing you've seen squashing lion faces, or do you make up your own? I've seen squashing lion faces. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I see them like when they yawn and snarl and stuff. Of course. So here, I'm going to bring his head up. Let me get this. I don't like that nose. It's all crooked. Do you feel like there's still public or even among artists uh, interest in traditional animation films over the latest push towards digital, or is this shift largely business? No, it was business. If you leave it up to the artists, there, there we'd still have a lot of hand-drawn animation, and not to not to take anything away from CG animation. I think it's wonderful. I just don't think that we needed to shift so far the other way. Personally. So here, now you can see I'm starting to stretch these eyes. Here's the squash. Here's This is going to be the stretch. So I'm going to get those brows way up there. Which art style um, do you think is less seen in the world? What art style do I think is less seen in the world? Yeah. I don't know what that means. Is there um, a like a oil watercolor, like maybe different? Medium, I don't. I have no idea what would be less seen. I I don't know. So here we're gonna bring that. You can see I'm squashing out that nose. Oh, oh. <laughs> How many paper cuts have you gotten? <laughs> A lot. And they're always right between, right there. Oh. Get them right there. Oh, right between, between the, the yeah, index right and middle? Yeah, right little fleshy spot between your fingers. Oh, ha, oh, oh, ha, oh. ha. Yeah, nope. Nope. 
So there's a look at that expression change. Whoa. Ah. So one thing that we're going to be doing, along with my uh, uh, costumed figure course that I've got planned that I'm working on, um, we've got another one coming up on drawing clear expressions. And um, it's going to be a short, a shorter course, but I'm going to take you through what I think about. And it's a lot of thinking about everything that I'm showing you now. But I'm going to get much more in depth on how to to get your expressions much clearer and subtle, more subtle. I'm going to get I'm going to, his face is going to go right off the page. Watch this. Have you seen the movie Roar from 1981? It's literally just a movie about 150 untrained big cats running around a house and being, well. Big cats. I have not seen it. Sounds like fun, though. It does. Vanessa asks, I know 2D animation is always a challenge, but how many years did it take you to get somewhat comfortable with it? I would say it took me about five. five. I still, I, you know... It's still work. It's always, it's never easy, but it probably took about four or five years before I was really, really comfortable with it. Are you just doing keyframes in this uh, squatch and stretch, or are yeah. you going to uh, be doing tweens too? I might be able to do some in betweens if you, if you want, but it's really, I was just, I wanted to do this just to show you how the idea of stretching and squashing, you know, with like the, the, the bouncing ball idea, how that applies to character animation. So here you can see I'm just stretching everything. I think about the eye stretching, the brow stretching. And by the fact that the brow is stretching, maybe the forehead is squashing because it's got to push all that fur up, right? Out of curiosity. That big, that big expression change. Hmm? Out of curiosity, what is the largest drawing or painting you've ever done in terms of size? I just, it's funny you ask that because I just posted it today. There's a big otter painting that I did that was like 42 inches by 70, 40, what was it? 48 inches by 72 inches. It's like four feet by six feet. Wow. That's big. How long did it take you to make that one? A month. There we go. So here, I'm just drawing them right off the page. I drew them so big. I got into it. This is something I always used to do back back in my Disney days. I would I'd have to check myself and make sure I wasn't drawing too big. Once you start getting that energy in, and all of a sudden the the drawings start getting bigger and bigger. What are your thoughts about a uh, Salvador uh, Dali art? Oh, I love it. Love it. We should give these drawings away. We should find a way to give these away too. We're, we're giving away the, the charcoal ones we did a couple weeks ago. We should give these away. That'd be quite neat. They're just scribbles. There we go. What advice would you like wow, to... So Nick says, wow, I'm surprised you haven't seen Roar. It's wildly uh, it's wildly considered the most dangerous movie ever made. Oh, Melanie Griffith, I heard about this. I remember this. Now, I never saw it. I've heard about it, Nick. Yeah, is it... A, yeah, because they're young girls. Didn't they have, like, have the lion or something? I can't remember. But um, 
Uh, Mally Griffiths is in it as a young girl. It's directed by your stepfather. It's supposed to be insane. Yeah, I've heard about it. Go ahead, Dustin. One sec. What advice would you like to give a kid who loves to be an animator in the future? Uh, how can he or she develop the style? Well, you know what? I just I just loved to draw as a kid, and I learned, and then I learned animation. I did. I was in my I was twenty years old when I started learning animation. I just love to draw. So my advice to you is, if you're young, just draw a lot. Learn how to draw. Learn good draftsmanship. Those are the things that make a great animator. Understanding movement. But you can't portray that movement unless you're able to draw it. So that's the basis. So there's our neutral. Here's our neutral pose. Here's our squash. So you get even a bigger change between that squash and the and the stretch. <laughs> so you know, make sure that you're changing the silhouette shape of your character when you're pushing your your expressions. Let's get this one a little clearer. So what we what we would do is called a rub down. You take your eraser and just roll it. We roll we would roll it over our paper to pick up just to knock it back a little bit. So now your eraser is all graphite it up. You just stretch it out. After a while, these just turned to goo. You got to throw them out. Hey, Aaron, I have a question. When you left Disney, did you leave because you had a better opportunity or did you just disagree with them? Could you have been in a situation where they wouldn't let you go or not be able to get another job as an animator? No, I actually left on good terms. I was having some personal issues in my life. My wife had passed away from cancer, uh, Dustin's mom. And so Dustin and I and her sister, we were just heartbroken we were having a hard time at home and I wasn't doing very well at work because of that and so I was directing a movie and I was taken off the movie uh, because it just wasn't going well and that's when I realized I needed to just kind of make a big change in my life and so that's when I decided I quit I quit on good terms though like I said and um, I and, uh, decided to go back and kind of find myself again and that's what we did Dustin and I we packed everything up uh, our his sister my daughter she had left a couple months earlier and uh, we just headed back to Florida and I started all over again and that's that's why I left Disney but I'm, I'm a big advocate of never burn a bridge you know you might leave a studio but never burn those bridges you know the time I had at Disney some of the best times I ever had. And I made some of the best friends that I still have to this day working at Disney. And, uh, you know, one of my closest friends that I talk about a lot, Jim Jackson, he was at Disney. You know, he went through the closing of Disney and now he's going through the closing of, of uh, along with 450 other people, the closing of Blue Sky. But we're all survivors, you know, especially when you get to our age, you know, we've all gone through something in our life that just, you know, you just, you just got to fight through it and you, you find the, the next thing in your life that's going to get you through it. And that's what we did when I left Disney. And, um, and if it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't have, you know, started Creature Art Teacher. So that's kind of a crazy kind of a crazy thought that you go through a horrible tragedy in your life and it sets you on a path that ultimately becomes rewarding and uh, 
you know, when we started this business way back in the day after I left Disney, I wanted to do something that I would make Karen, you know, proud. And, uh, and so here we are now, eight years later, I think she'd be really proud of what we do with this business. She was always a very generous, giving person. So I wanted to make sure that we could do something that would be right in the vein of what she would like to do. So there you go. There's your, I probably, you probably didn't expect an answer like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, I've, we've had that question a few times. And I like I actually I, I it doesn't bother me to talk about it anymore. I like to talk about it because it's it's something that you, Dustin, and that and I, your sister, and you know, you learn this lesson of surviving horrible emotional pain of being able to come out of it and you know, move on. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily move on, but move, learn how to move. I would like to ask about your book, Aaron. The delivery will be in June, right? Hopefully, that's that's the goal. It might be June 2026. <laughs> 2026. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, actually, Nick and I meet uh, uh, regarding the book. We get together uh, probably three times a week, two or three times a week, uh, getting that. Uh, we pulled up, we've pulled together all the art that we're going to have in it, plus some. So now we're in the process of whittling down uh, the art a little bit more. And then we're going to be laying it out over the next month or so. And that will get us right into the pocket for printing and delivery. There we go. You can see that squash and stretch. YouTube question. Is it true that Disney used to recycle animations for other movies? Oh, yeah. There's one that's floating around the internet right now on Facebook that shows Mowgli and, and Christopher Robin. But it was also, uh, there's a lot of stuff of Robin Hood, uh, Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Was it Maid Marian? Yeah. Dancing. And, and uh, that was from, uh, they first used that, I think, in... Was it Cinderella? Sleep? No, uh, 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 sleep. Uh, 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 Snow White. Jeez, I couldn't get it out. Well, yeah, they'd recycle it all the time, especially in the '60s, because they were running out of money. The movies weren't as lucrative anymore, and it was, you know, they already had great animation. So Wooly Ritherman, uh, I think it was Wooly that thought of it, that said, "Hey, let's just let's just recycle this animation," and. Uh, It'll be a lot cheaper. Whether or not it really was, because they had to redraw everything anyway, but maybe they saved on the animation part of it. So there's our squash. So look how complex we can get. You know, it, it's still all the same concept as this. You know, you've got this right here. Your squash and stretch. And this is squash and stretch here, just on a much more complex level. YouTube question. Would you be open to, to try drawing with your non-dominant hand? <laughs> you mean this one? No. Is that one? <laughs> <laughs> no. There's no reason to. I don't like it. I see your change. Oh, that's right. Nick's reminding me. It, this is the one-year anniversary of my Procreate course. It's been really, really popular. And uh, we had a great time putting it together. I can't believe that was a year ago. Feels like Nick and I were sitting here not too long ago filming that right here in my studio. Nick came up for the weekend. We got it all planned out. And then we came up and shot it all in one weekend. It was fun. But it's, uh, so it's uh, the one year anniversary of my Procreate course, and that class is 50% off this weekend. So check that out, will you? Hey, check this out, will you? Miss you too, Jesse. Have you seen Greenland of 
worried about any comets? <laughs> I love that movie. Have you seen it, Dustin Greenland? Oh, I watched it with you. Oh, that's right. We did watch it together. That's right. <laughs> Seriously? As I was saying it, I was like, oh, shoot. I think he saw it with me. <laughs> well, I I can't watch it with you, like, right towards right towards the beginning. Like, I think I walk, walked in uh, as they were getting to the plane. But I did, I I did go back later and watch watch it from the very beginning. It's anyway. a great movie, isn't it? Oh yeah. There. I just like I just like drawing lines. So there's three. It shows a little bit of squash and stretch. Are your books going to be a limited time only? No. No, the books will not be a limited time only. Now, our first printing is, is we're only doing a limited amount on the first printing, but if there's enough of a demand, we'll do more printing. The one thing we are going to have is a volume two that uh, at some point, not sure when, but we will do a volume two. This one's been selling very well. We've been happy about it. Let me hit this a little better. Is it true someone bought an original Michelangelo drawing and erased it? I don't know about that. That'd be ridiculous. I don't know if someone's done that. That would be evil. <laughs> Beyond all measure. And Jesse said, I seen a meme that says, you look like something I drew with my left hand. And I instantly thought of, thought of Aaron and said to myself, that would be a hell of a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Nick is saying that on the books, the pre-order sale is uh, limited. So once the book comes out, the price goes up. But uh, once again, if you guys use promo code ARTLOVE, you can get 25% off of all the art lessons, animation courses, and brushes on the website. So there's a squash and a stretch. Let's do a, a, a human character. We're going to do something with these drawings. we got to send them out. Somebody lucky will get these drawings. I say lucky. Man, I, I'm in love with myself, aren't I? <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> if you could only pick one, what's your favorite animal? If you could only pick one. Uh, I, I can't. I can't pick one. No, I'm not going to do it. I can't just pick one. So here I want to show you from the side what this might look like. Actually, I don't like this one. Let's start this a little differently. A different angle. How do you deal with art block? Just draw. Just do it. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta fight through it. And the only way you can fight through it most of the time is to just draw. Just just literally put your pencil on the paper and start working. And just sometimes I'll just freeform just to start whatever comes to my head. As an artist with limited experience in animation drawings, I do well drawing from photos. Uh, where do you recommend I start with uh, your courses? I'm a former subscriber uh, due to schedule limitations and would like to start again. Um, I would you, you could you could start anywhere. Yeah, you know, I I would start with the uh, you know more of the 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 
fundamental classes like the design classes, the the uh, figure classes, that sort of thing. So here. Because this is kind of squashed, it's tilted, it's getting a little bit deformed, but that's okay. Do you do a lot of animal watching, like at zoos? Or in real life, yeah. I mean, I'll go to the... I'll go to... Uh, like Woodrow for Merritt Island? Yeah. Or, you know, Africa, you know, if we can. Here's hoping. Here's hoping, kid. What's your favorite type of music? Oh, I that's another hard one because I jump all over the place. It's like, I, you know, you know that Dustin. It's like Dustin's got the most eclectic taste of music I've ever seen. <laughs> you like everything. Just about. Twitch question, as you worked on some Disney Renaissance movies, what is your favorite Disney movie that you put out, that they put out recently, or what is your general opinion about the 3D animated movies? You know, for me, it's not so much about the, I don't care about the medium as much as I care about the story. If the story is enter, entertaining for me and I can get lost in it without being aware of the medium, then it doesn't bother me. And, uh, you know, I love Zootopia. I love Tangled. Is the book Alla Prima 2 by Richard Schmidt uh, worth getting? Yes. Anything by Richard Schmidt is worth getting. Where in Africa, uh, Africa do you like to go to? The Maasai Mara in Kenya. I love the Maasai Mara in Kenya. It's the upper part of the Serengeti. The Serengeti goes up through Tanzania, and then when it crosses over into Kenya, it becomes the Maasai Mara. It's a much smaller area than the Serengeti, but it's just full of wildlife. So here I've got this character. I'm going to have his hair slipped back. Like the silhouette. Like the silhouette. Like the silhouette. Pull along. Does your hands or fingers uh, hurt after a whole day of drawing? Any tips uh, for preventing that? No, they don't hurt. I've been doing it a long time. Your body probably gets used to it over over time as you keep doing it. Yeah. Now, a lot of times I'll overdraw like this, but I just can't help it. I love drawing. So let's get another one in here. So how you know now that this guy's in a in a profile. When you're animating, do you use multiple pencil grades or do you stick with one softness of uh, for animation? I stick with the one like I'm using here. Yeah, because it would probably take a lot longer to animate if you're using multiple pencils at a time. Yeah. So you can, he you can see here, I'm going to... Is my head getting in the way? Just a tad. Your the your clump of hair is like right at the bottom of the screen. So 
what I'm trying to do here is imagine all that flesh pulled up. How many hours do you draw generally per day? Uh, sometimes I don't draw at all. So it just depends a lot. What do you think was the the most you've done in a day? Well, I've driven, I've drawn eighteen hours, eighteen hours. Yeah. No, Dri business. driven eighteen hours. <laughs> I've drawn eighteen hours. <laughs> what did I say? Driven. You, for for a second there, you did say you said driven then drawn. Oh yeah. <laughs> you subconsciously corrected yourself. <laughs> Here, this is a big extreme. Look how squashy we can get them. In character design, whether it's a uh, human or animal, uh, how is the process for that? How does it work? Well, that's a broad question. Um, you know, when, when you're character designing, you you got to understand the character from a story standpoint first. You gotta understand the art direction of the film. And then from there, you start, you know, a lot of the times we do a ton of research into what it is that we're drawing. First, you know, when I when I started on the Lion King, we started doing just tons of research on Lion anatomy and how to draw lines. And then from there, we'd get together, the artists, we'd all get together and show our drawings to each other and get together with the directors and make sure that they're all being drawn to feel like they fit the same movie, right? Team squinting? Grimacing? Squint. I get them kind of streamlined like this wedge shape. <clears throat> Hi, Aaron. I'm studying animation at university, and it's not really what I thought it would be. The subject is basically illustration plus animation. If you want to add add on to it over the year and a half of me studying the most we have uh, went through is a walk cycle and a few camera angle changes as much as your courses have helped i was wondering if you had a list of animation exercises increasing in difficulty that is good practice thanks camera yeah one of the things that i would get along if you've gone through my um my introduction and uh and my my other animation courses my acting for animation course That'll help a lot, I think. But just getting in there and, and trying different mechanics, getting used to animating mechanics, um, along with the emotion, you know, because you want the emotion to drive the mechanics. Um, I have a feeling that maybe your instructors are have a little bit of difficulty with that kind of stuff, and therefore it might not, they might teach it differently. That's what I've found with, it's not easy to stuff to do.
So I would definitely get into the acting side of it. When you first started animation, how long did it take before you could keep volumes consist consistent without always having to think about it? I still always have to think about it. I think every animator goes through that. That's all part of the difficulty of animation, is keeping your volumes consistent. And did Disney ever have a quota per day for artwork amounts yep. to be done? Yep. Was that stressful? No. I mean, if you st it, it, it was never a hard quota to keep as long as you stayed at your desk and worked. There were some guys that, you know, played around too much and it would get a little hard for them to hit their quotas. But, you know, if you just stayed at your desk and worked, then it wasn't hard. Yeah, quotas are pretty common in places like that. In fact, I remember in when I was working as a, a depth artist for Stereo D, uh, our, our quota for the depth teams were, if I remember, I think it was either 240 frames worth of footage or up to three shots done by the end of the week. Yeah. Like that was our, that was our weekly, weekly quotas. That's not bad. That's pretty average, but sometimes they, they would push further. Sometimes they would subside it a bit depending on how busy our, our hours were Yeah. because of projects. But yeah, that was kind of the most average was like 240 frames or, or three shots. And so it's, Instead of dailies, it was a week. It was weekly uh, quotas. Yeah, that's what we had. In cleanup, we had daily quotas. But once I got into animation, it was weekly quotas. So now, watch this, that shape change in this nose. He got stretched because now he's going to open his mouth. If I subscribe to your courses, do I get access to the workshop in March? You get you get uh, a discount. When you worked on the Lion King, how long did it take you to animate Nala? It took me. Well, I animated Nala and then also helped with Simba and did a little bit of other characters too, like adult Simba and I think I animated a shot or two. No, I just adult Simba, but um. I was on for about a year, so it took me about a year to do Nala. Did you do your own cleanup drawings uh, when you were at Disney, or uh, were they passed off to other animators? They're passed off to other animators. What sequence have you animated that makes you laugh the hardest? Oh, well, I don't, like her. I, don't, I don't like the shape of that mouth. It's just all stretched to come down. Um, I haven't done a lot of comedy stuff. It just spit on my paper. That's nice. <laughs> But is there anything like even if it's not? A yeah, I did some Roger Rabbit stuff. That was a lot of fun. If in case was um, it was asking it in a different way. Uh, was there a uh, shot like you were working on that something happened around it, like something in the workspace that that was funny that you know you think of whenever you the, see a shot in, in mulan with the gang of three there was always something fun to do in there yeah because you always talk about um the one the one moment that makes you laugh with uh with yao with kissing his fist because that was an idea that alex gave you yeah but i mean that was <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how funny that was, but it was it was definitely fun. Well, the way you talk about it is pretty funny. Yeah. But, you know, we had a lot of really great experiences on that, you know, over the years. 
But here, I'm, you can see I'm trying to go from that big squash to that big. open expression what medium do you like the most you know what that's tough i love drawing i love painting i love painting in oil i love painting in watercolor um i love charcoal um so it's hard to say really Listen, whatever happened to you trying to get a house, um, that idea is currently on hold. Currently had some other stuff going on. When, open us up a little bit more. When animating multiple components like speech, uh, wind combined with squatch, stretched, etc., does it get extra confusing or frustrating to pull off? Sometimes it does. You gotta, you just gotta sit back and and simplify it in your head. Now, even doing stuff like this, I'll get I'll get overcomplicated. So, just real quick, I want to jump up here, Nick, because Nick did a little bit of research. Uh, he said it was not it was not a Michelangelo that was erased. It was in 1953, Robert Rauschenberg erased uh, De Kooning drawing, framed it, and sold it as a separate piece called <laughs> Erased. De Cooney drawing. De Cooney provided the piece and gave his blessing. <laughs> wow. So here, now, now I'm getting to where I like it. I'm going to get that anatomy right because that jaw, that jaw's got to open up back here. Dustin, did you get the Alpha 1 yet? No, I have not. I do plan on getting it, though. It's definitely on top of my list. Had a few issues. Huh? So it had a few issues. Yeah. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> I made my parents play my Lion King uh, uh, daily as a child, or the movie as a child. It was all. It was my all-time favorite Disney movie. Uh, do you have a favorite scene you worked on in that in that movie? In The Lion King. Yep. Uh, uh, during the "Can't Wait to Be King" song, there was some fun stuff that we did in there. You know, that little scene where Nala and Simba are making faces behind Zazu's back it was a fun little piece of animation. You know, all the stuff going to the elephant graveyard with the two of them, that was fun. Ooh, what kind of table or desk is that? Can't figure out the name of it. What? The the desk that you're animating from. It's an animation desk. It's a, <laughs> it's a Weber. Weber. Bye-bye. Weber. <laughs> the story about the erased drawing reminds me of the banana taped to a wall. Someone took it off the wall and ate, ate the quote unquote artwork. Yeah. So there we go. There's a there's a bit of a stretch. You see that big change. Who is your favorite brother bear character? Uh, the moose as a as a pair. I actually love the Rams too. I love Kenai. I <laughs> love the Rams. <laughs> I had a lot of fun recording those guys. Those were the Budweiser frog and the chameleons and all that. The guys that did the Budweiser commercials. Yeah. So those guys were they were they were just funny guys. Yeah, Rut and Tuke, I gotta say, are my are yeah, my favorite. And, yeah, recording Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas was a, a real honor and a treat. I really enjoyed working with them. How's it going, Bear? 
Don't call me that. Okay, Mr. Bear? No, I mean, I'm not a bear. <laughs> oh, gee, <laughs> you're one big beaver. <laughs> All right. So let's, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Did you ever get to meet any famous celebrities that offered their voices to a movie you worked on? Oh, yeah. I've met almost all of them. So in directing Brother Bear, I, I've worked with all of them, and, and every character uh, I've animated, I've met. So there's, there's our squash and stretch there. YouTube question, is it hard to voice act? Is it hard for voice acting? Do I have to get into acting before doing voice acting? Yes, you do. And I think voice acting is even harder because you have to do it all with your voice. You don't have the benefit of visuals. So it's very, very difficult. It's hard to get in there and put it, you know, all of that emotion and, you know, into a microphone. And you've got 20 people watching you, judging you. <laughs> So, once again, I want to remind you guys that uh, this is our this weekend is our Valentine's Day sale, and if you use the promo code Art Love, you'll get twenty five percent off of all of our art lessons, animation courses, and brushes. So very cool there. And then uh, also, I want to remind you if you're interested in uh, um, uh, joining me on March twentieth, I've got a new live virtual workshop coming up. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, you can get more information there. But I'm going to be talking about painting animal portraits in watercolor, one of my favorite things to do. Um, if you were with us last week, you got to see me do a little bit of that, but we're going to do it on a much bigger scale on the 20th. And then the other thing, too, is I've got a new book coming out, my first ever Art of book, and that's going to be coming out... Uh, by June, but you can get in there and uh, pre-order it for a pretty big savings. Um, Nick and I have been meeting on this every week, getting uh, chipping away at it, getting it. Uh, I know, you know how much artwork I've done over the last 10 years? Just the last 10 years, not, not even the last 30. I'm we have been wading through literally thousands of pieces of art, and uh, I think we got it whittled down to at least the, there's probably about 2% more that we need to weed out, and then I think we're going to be good. But uh, we're really excited about it. I'm really excited. Um, I'm, uh, uh, and I'm really happy that you guys are excited as well. We've had a great response, and so I appreciate that. So go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com, and you can pre-order the book there as well. So um, there it is. This is Squash and Stretch when it applies to a character. You know, it, it, you can see that bouncing ball. And then you take those principles and you can apply it to your characters. Today, I just did facial expressions. I can talk about this and teach on it for weeks. We could turn this into an entire college course because we got to get in, you know, I would get into the full body and how the body is, is affected by these principles as well. The acting, all of that. But here is the front view. Squashing and stretching. And then uh, that side view. Washing and stretching. <laughs> but it's all about changing shape and being dynamic. That's what you want. You want to feel that that change and get that emotion across as clearly as possible. And if you find yourself holding back in the animation, then the emotion's gonna feel held back as well. So you gotta really push yourself and learn to really let go and uh, and when you're doing your animation and, and you know be really clear and broad with your with what you're saying, unless it calls for a very subtle <laughs> acting. Are you going to um, sign these when you give these away? Uh, I could, but uh, I'll get together with Nick and we'll figure out a way to, yes, I am going to sign them. So hopefully, or we might, you know what I think we might do? We, um, uh, rather than give these away, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a charity, a couple of charities that Nick and I have been talking about that we want to give to. We might do a little auction for these, and uh, and the, all of the proceeds. I won't, you know, Nick and I will not keep a penny. All of the money will go towards the charity that we choose. Uh, like Nick and I need to talk about it, but um, we've got quite a few pieces of art that we're talking about doing this with, and um, so give us a give us a week or so, and we will um, we'll have more information on that. 
And I think this would be, um, I think we could do some good with that. So that's what we're going to do there. The, uh, the charcoal drawings, we're still, we said that we were going to give those away, and those are being given away. But uh, I want to do something with, for charity with these. So there you go, guys. I hope you learned a little bit today in how to think about squash and stretch with your characters. I know it was just facial stuff, but you can kind of extrapolate from that and pull it out to full body and that sort of thing. But it's really all about making sure that not only the interiors of your expressions are squashing and stretching, but think about the silhouette as well. And that goes for the body. So uh, I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. It's Valentine's weekend, so I hope you have a lovey-dovey weekend. <laughs> uh, and I uh, want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. I didn't. It's going to be on a Sunday, isn't it? It uh, is Sunday, yes. Is Sunday. So um, get out there. Have a great weekend. I think it's going to be pretty rainy here in Florida, but that's okay. We always need the rain. Yes. And uh, um, go out there. Put some beauty back into the world. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always love animating on paper and talking about that, one of my favorite subjects. So like I said, I hope you learned something. Go out, do some drawing, do some squashing and stretching, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. Put some beauty back into the world. See ya. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And now for any newcomers, if you guys are interested in any wildlife photography, uh, you can check out my Instagram over at Dustin underscore Blaze, where I post new wildlife photos every Monday and Friday. And also on Creature Art Teacher, you can find some uh, reference bundles for some gators, otters, and some some really cool uh, Florida wildlife, like especially sandhill cranes. Those are really cool in there. So be sure to go over there, check those out. And once again, glad you guys enjoyed. See you guys next week. Happy Valentine's Day. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.